Hello again, Michael McDonald here from uh, Mayday Flight Tutoring, uh, another in my series of videos. Uh, I think for the next couple of days I'm going to concentrate on uh, some practical uses for your E6B flight computer. Now there are of course uh, electronic versions and there's the old-fashioned whiz, whiz wheel versions. Many of you have the whiz wheel as well as the electronic ones. I find that the whiz wheel ones are very easy to use in flight and uh, this one here I bought back in oh, 1992 when I was doing my private pilot license and I've had it ever since and I keep it attached to my knee board and so I can put it on my knee in flight and quickly use it and refer to it. So today's lesson is going to be about what if you are asked by an examiner during a flight test or by your instructor in preparation for the flight test uh, to, to uh, provide the, this information, what is your true airspeed in flight? Now, of course, your indicated airspeed, uh, your airspeed indicator is not going to give you the true airspeed um, directly. You're going to need to calculate it. There are a couple of methods of doing that, and I'm going to focus on the E6B method. Okay, well, you need to know three things while you're flying. Now, this would be in the navigation portion of your flight test after you say, gone to your set heading point and you're on course and you're at the proper altitude and your power is set and you're leaned and your heading indicator is all lined up at the compass and uh, you're going to your first checkpoint. And then that's when usually the question will be asked, what is your true airspeed? Well, you can use the E6B to determine that in flight fairly simply. So the E6B has many functions and as you can see here, one of the functions is airspeed correction and that's what we're doing now there's a window here and the window has several uh, sets of gradations we are going to concentrate on the pressure altitude which is indicated in thousands of feet and the outside air temperature which in this case is indicated in degrees Celsius then we'll be using the inner ring and the outer ring to make the final calculation. So you need to know your pressure altitude and the outside air temperature and what your indicated airspeed is. All right, those three things. So let's start with the pressure altitude. Now there are a number of ways to determine what your pressure altitude is. And one simple method in flight is to use your altimeter. Now what you're, if you, if, when your altimeter is set to the altimeter setting, what you're reading is not actually the pressure altitude, that's the indicated altitude. So in order to have the altimeter give you the pressure altitude, it's very simple. Just write down what your altimeter setting is, and maybe write it down on a piece of paper um, so that you can remember it, and then turn the airspeed indicator knob so that in the window you see 2992 is lined up. So you set your altimeter to 29.92, standard pressure. When you do that, then whatever the altimeter reads is your pressure altitude. It's that simple. So let's imagine that you've done that and your pressure altitude is 6,000 feet. Okay, 6,000 feet. You look in the outside air temperature gauge and it shows that it's, oh, well, let's say 20 degrees Celsius at 6,000 feet. Pretty warm day. So that's going to indicate that your, that your true airspeed is going to be faster than your indicated airspeed because the air is thinner. So what you do very simply is line up, find 6,000 feet on the pressure altitude side of the, of the uh, window, okay, and line it up against 20 degrees Celsius. It's that simple. So I'll just do that here. So 20 degrees against 6,000 feet, 10, 20, there we go, and I'll see if you can see it here. All right, here's be correct, let the focus come in here. See, that's upwards of plus 50, so the, the thick line is 10, 20, and you can see there's 5,000, 6,000. So 6,000 lined up against 20 degrees Celsius. So now you've calibrated your E6B, okay? That's the first step, first major step in using the E6B. You have the pressure altitude, you have the outside air temperature lined up, okay? Now you have the inner ring and the outer ring. And the instructions are, as you can see it right here, set pressure altitude, 
all right, against the temperature in Celsius. All right, your true airspeed will be found by looking at your indicated airspeed on the inner ring and then just simply looking up on the outer ring and that will tell you what your true airspeed is, okay? So let's imagine that your airspeed indicator says that you're doing 100 knots, all right? So 100 knots, mine's a little bit worn out here, but luckily there's 90, 95, 100 knots. Now this is actually in calibrated airspeed, which is not really your indicated airspeed, it's off by a knot or two. And you could actually convert your indicated airspeed to the calibrated airspeed simply by looking in the performance part of your pilot operating handbook. Of course, you're not going to have any flap settings. Uh, you're not going to have any flaps in cruise flight. So you would look at zero flaps and then there's a, it's a table and it says if your indicated airspeed is this, your calibrated airspeed will be this. Calibrated airspeed is, is really the actual airspeed. The problem with the pitot tube is it's prone to some errors due to airflow around the wing and, and especially changes with different flap settings. But for the purposes of what we're doing, a couple of knots one way or the other is not that big a deal. Okay, we're not looking for, we're not looking for written examination uh, accuracy. We're just looking for in-flight um, indications. So you can, for all intents and purposes, use uh, say that your calibrated airspeed is your indicated airspeed. It's only going to be off by a knot or two. All right, so you find that calibrated airspeed 100 knots, there it is there, on the inner ring, and then just simply look on the outer ring. And you can see there's 110 knots, all right, 111, 112. So at 100 knots indicated airspeed or calibrated airspeed, you're getting 112 knots true airspeed. That's your true airspeed, give or take a knot or two. That's pretty good. So you can see that your true airspeed is considerably greater than your, than your indicated airspeed, like 12 knots. And uh, that's it. That's how you calculate your true airspeed in flight. It's that simple with the handy dandy E6B. Now, uh, just so you know, there are a couple of other tricks I can teach you here. Many airspeed indicators actually have this function built around the dial. You'll see a temperature, a, t a temperature ring, and you'll and, and, and it's and a turnable ring, which is pressure altitude. And so it's like a little mini E6B built into your airspeed indicator. So you can use that as well. Often, though, I find that these are worn out with use and age. So uh, it's always good to have your E6B with you to do that. Uh, another quick way to get your pressure altitude, if you don't want to. If you don't want to make the calculation or use your, your, uh, your, <coughs> your al altimeter set to 2992, is you can just have a quick glance at your transponder. And if it's a mode C uh, pressure altitude uh, uh, signaling transponder, it may show the pressure altitude in you know, a little window there. But uh, it's very easy to just simply flip your airspeed indicator over to 2992 in the window and then read the... Uh, pressure altitude off of the altimeter itself. So that's it, a quick and simple use of the E6B to calculate your true airspeed in flight. And I hope you found this helpful. And it's not a big mystery, really, as long as you know pressure altitude, you know the air temperature, and you know what your indicated airspeed is, and you have one of these, you can get the job done. So there you go. I hope you have a great day and talk to you soon.